Hi students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I am streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest here in Central Europe near the Danube River. I hope everybody has had a fantastic week so far. Hi Pachu, hi Sied, hi Nyung Ting Kim, hi Carolina, Valiant Venture, good to see you in class. Sorry I didn't answer that last question, I believe was yours in the previous class. Um, keep it as simple as what works for you, Valiant Venture. That's my answer to that question. Jungmin, good to see you in class as always. Armit Bogan, nice to catch you, see you catch this second class. And Sheng Hung, good to see you in this class as well. Students, in this class we are looking at a challenging IELTS reading passage three for the academic version of the exam. Now for students who are doing the general version of the test, keep in mind that your section three reading is one passage and it is very similar to the three reading passages of the academic IELTS. Technophys, thanks for asking, I'm doing fantastic. All right, everyone. For the best materials out there, six original practice tests, a fully interactive course, and over 100 hours of video lessons. Check us out at aehelp.com for the academic version of the exam to get ready. That page looks like this. You can uh, join by clicking that big red button. Then you will have a My student account which you can access up there and you get a tour to walk you through all of our fancy different parts and I know that a lot of you are looking for these videos so here is the video tab and I'm just going to I know it's bright because it's a brighter background but I just wanted to show you that in the videos for those of you who have access to our website and our premium course. Uh, you have access to key strategies. There's five videos there. You have listening section videos. You have reading videos. You have writing lesson videos for task one, task two, speaking videos, lots of them. These are all HD videos, so make sure you're checking those out. And then we actually put up all of our live class recordings. Uh, onto the website as well. So you have all of these videos to learn from among many other useful tools. I thought I'd just show that to you today before starting. All right, and you can access those videos through your app now as well. Uh, go to your Android Play Store or iTunes Apple Store on iOS and look for Academic I E L T S help. Okay. Uh, Valiant Venture, it's a good question about punctuation for writing. I have taught classes before for correct comma use and so on. Uh, send me an email, Valiant Venture, and I'll gladly schedule a member's uh, class that uh, focuses on punctuation. How does that sound? Okay. All right. Um, so, for general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. And uh, for questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. That's my name, Adrian, at aehelp.com. All right, everyone. So uh, schedule is up on our community board as well. Today, reading. Tomorrow, we will focus on writing. And today's reading, we are taking from our second exam book, passage three, as I said before. And we are looking at this passage, which is the aesthetic merit of abstract art. What are we looking at? What is this title? What is abstract art? Anybody know? What is abstract art. Well, you get a picture and in the IELTS it might not be a color like this or a colorful picture unless it's the computer-based exam maybe, but 
you will often have pictures when it's a challenging topic. And the picture is there to help you. Janak Jing says it's emotional art. Not necessarily. Uh, Pachu says it's about feelings. Maybe. Uh, Carolina says it's no real figures. Mario Espitia says it's something that's not touchable. Shang Hung says it's something with meaning, but it's hard to understand. And Valiant Venture says, I have no idea. Okay. Well, let's step, step back one here, students, and discuss an important point. So, anybody know the opposite term for abstract, the antonym of abstract? It is unclear. There is a hidden but intended meaning. Okay. The opposite, the antonym, is concrete. Okay. It has multiple definitions, but the definition we'll, we're looking at here is clear, physical, tangible. Okay. Often with abstract, we'll say intangible. Cannot be real or truly seen. Okay. Now, some of you might be thinking at this point, really, Adrian, abstract art, will we get a topic like this? in the IELTS exam for passage three. What do you think? What are your opinions? I'd love to hear what some of you think. Do you think that IELTS will be cruel enough to give this kind of a topic for you for passage three on your next test? Is that possible? What do you think? Pachu seems to think yes. Carolina says, of course they will. Bebek says, no man. Charlie Sen says, yeah, they will. <laughs> Siva says, definitely. Gerbil says, yes. Raj says, no. Juan Pablo says, it's possible. Carolina says, any topic. Yeah, they will. Okay. Um, absolutely, they will. Absolutely, they will. Okay. Uh, the IELTS can give you any topic, and they have had topics with this kind of idea in mind. In fact, just a couple weeks ago, um, we talked about uh, psychology in the class, in the reading, and one of our students says, wow, that's exactly the same topic that I had in my reading, was the brain thought process, was the topic of their reading passage. So, yeah, they do. Yeah, they absolutely do. So those of you who are thinking they do, you're right. In fact... One way that the IELTS, keep this in mind, increases the difficulty from passage one to passage three is by giving abstract topics. So one way that IELTS increases the difficulty from passage one, two, to three is to move from physical to abstract topics. Okay, like for example, passage one is about pyramids or volcanoes. Okay, and passage three is about social attachment. Okay, pyramids, volcanoes, yeah, we can clearly see them. They're big triangles. One is man-made to house a tomb. The other is made by nature, explodes, shoots lava in the air. Um, and then passage three is about social attachment. Social attachment is 
connections made among people. Um, so obviously it's more difficult to uh, read about topics where you can't just touch it or see it. Okay, so for those students who want band seven or higher, uh, students who need band seven or more, be sure to practice reading about abstract. non-physical topics. Okay, it's very important that you include that into your study plans for the reading section. Okay. All right. Well, let's get back to point here, which is the aesthetic of abstract art. So what do you do when you get this topic? Well, first of all, leave it for last okay so don't do it first uh, because it's very challenging you'll get upset frustrated confused that's not a good start to the reading section so start with the easier topic if there's a topic that's very physical like a pyramid it's easy to see visualize start with that one okay all right um, use the picture okay when you see the picture even when it doesn't say much just this kind of blue rectangle there's still information there. This information is, okay, it's art. It's something that's unclear. Something to do about this art's value. Okay. Aesthetic means beauty. Learn this word. Okay. So aesthetic beauty. Merit means value. Okay. And abstract is intangible. means it cannot be touched okay and art means expression through creation okay so we're looking at the value of beauty of art as an expression that we cannot touch all right you can figure that out even if you don't have super high level English and even if you are not a big fan of art, you're not an art lover, that's okay. No problem. You can figure this out. Use good critical thinking. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I read the title. I look at the picture. I try to get an idea of what I'm going to read as best as I can. What do I do next? What should I do after that? So what should I do? After that, I should visualize, think about the main idea, Mario, Espitia, absolutely. Yeah. I should read the questions. So Shang Hung Tsai said, yeah, read, read the questions because they might help you to understand this better. Sure. So when you're doing especially a difficult reading, so with difficult IELTS reading, number one, Read the title and look at the picture if possible. Try to paraphrase and get an idea. Then second, look at the questions and read the ones that are in the passage. This will help you understand and predict further. Okay, so let's do that together. So we flip our page to the end of the passage. 
<clears throat> the computer base, you can go to the end, okay? And then <clears throat> you can look at the question. So reading passage one has seven paragraphs, A to G. Which paragraph contains the following information? So this is matching information with the correct paragraph. Should I read this type of question before I read the passage? Yes, absolutely. Okay, because all of this is in the passage. So you're right, Chang Hung. Yeah, we should do that. Okay. Um, Kaoru Shimron is asking, what does this NB mean? It means note by the way. You may use any letter more than once. Okay, that's what that means. Note by the way. You may use any letter more than once. So, yeah, read these ones. So here we go, 27, the rejection of old rules of art. So this one here tells me that, okay, maybe I'm reading something about modern art, right? So modern art. Um, different kinds of aesthetic value. Again, aesthetic is maybe a new word for many of you. It means beauty or beautiful. 29. Two competing arguments about the value of abstract art. Okay, so different positions or different opinions arguing about each other. 30, ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. What does the word ambiguity mean? Anybody know what that word means? Nan Thai Kim, aesthetic means beauty. An aesthetician is a person who does makeup, Pedicure, manicure, that's an esthetician. Okay. Ambiguity means not very clear. That's right, Danielle Lixandru. It means not very clear. It means vague, unclear, or vague. So unclear part of the experience of beauty. Right? Number 31, the mysterious nature of abstract art. Ambiguity and mysterious are somewhat similar. And 32 is the aesthetic value is up to the viewer, up to the viewer. All right, next one, multiple choice. Should I read this one before I read the passage? Is it a good idea to read all of these uh, questions or statements and then the choices? Nantai Kim says, yep. Pradav says, no. Uh, Pachu says, read the questions only, and Amarjeet agrees, only the questions, and you're right. Um, this information can be confusing. Three pieces are wrong or false or not given. So I want to just focus on the question or the statement. This idea or the answer to this idea is somewhere in the passage. So I want to focus on this only. It's very important for multiple choice, okay? So have this in your mind while you read. For some people who find multiple choice very difficult, you might want to try to answer these as you read. So keep in mind the question and as you read, answer it, okay? When you think, oh, I think that's the answer. But be careful, sometimes the better answer comes later in the passage. Here we go, 33. What makes abstract art different from classic art? Number 34, a common critique of abstract art is that it lacks something. Number 35, why is it important to note that aesthetic merit not be solely reserved for the sublime? Sublime means the wow factor where you're like, whoa, that's amazing. Sublime or surreal. 36. While realist works of art explicitly show their meanings, abstract works of art do what? Okay. And the last set of questions is true, false, not given. Should I read these? 
and hopefully many of you right now that watch these classes regularly saying no for Dobbs sayings. No, 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 no. Don't read that. No, it's a really bad idea to read true, false, not given before the passage because... If they're false or not given, then you're pointlessly wasting your time. In fact, you're confusing yourself by ingesting extra and false information. So, now that we read these, so we read these questions, right? And it's a difficult passage. You should think about, in a difficult passage... How do these questions help me? Okay. So I know that. Let me do it this way. From these questions, I now know that I will read about art, different types of art, different views on art, old art versus new art, evaluating the beauty of art. Okay. Did most of you get this? So be honest with me. Did most of you get these ideas after reading these questions. So once you read them, did you kind of feel like, oh, I'm okay. Uh, I, I get that I'm going to be reading about art. I get that I'm probably going to read about different kinds of art, different values of alt art, old art, new art, um, beauty, considering or understanding beauty in art. Okay. So it seems like several of you did, uh, which is great. Okay. And if you didn't, then you have to improve your English before you get into these difficult passages. Okay, if you didn't get this much from reading these questions, then my suggestion to you is improve your English first, then come back to IELTS later. Okay, there aren't any real magical tricks or tips that can help you beyond that point. So you should be able to figure out or um, predict at least this much from these questions. Okay. There's a, there's a point where you have to be realistic with yourself and say, okay, it's too much. If you got this, then you're fine. All right. So now, uh, you should, before you read in your mind with a difficult passage, especially you should do some critical thinking. All right. So as long as you have this, much information or prediction in your mind, you're good to go. And you should apply some critical thinking. Okay. Critical thinking means that you should apply some what, why, how questions. Okay. What should be my first what question? So if I jump back here a little bit and I'm thinking about these questions for the passage and I go back to the beginning and I take a second look at this picture and I'm looking at the aesthetic merit of abstract art what question should I ask? Okay. So Shang Hung says, what is the passage about? Um, sure. And we know it's about abstract art, Shang Hung at this point. So we know it's about beauty and we know it's about abstract art. Sure. A good question. So the answer is it is about the 
beauty or value of abstract art. Art which is not clearly understood. Sure, so we get that answer, great. Now we go on to the next question, which is why. Why is this question important? So, yeah, Mario, that's a good question too. So there are different ways to approach it. And uh, Mario says, what is the most uh, beautiful part of this kind of art? Um, and sure, that's a good question to ask as well, Mario. So I think that those are all valuable questions at this point. Um, but she was asking, what is abstract art is a valuable question at this point. Uh, so being able to answer that it's art that we cannot touch or see clearly. It is art where the meaning is hidden by the artist. Okay. Valiant Venture says, well, ask the question, what is aesthetic abstract art? And that's good too. Valiant Venture, too bad you took that back. It was a good question. Okay. Um, Sonam uh, Chodan is asking, do we get a picture in the exam? Yes, you do, Sonam. For many uh, uh, passages, especially very difficult passages, there's a good chance that you will get a picture with the title to help you. Yeah. Um, so why? Why is the question of abstract art important? Why talk about it? Who cares? What's the logic here? Well, see what you come up with. These are my answers. Art is often valued and is worth a lot of money. Some people will call certain works of art beautiful masterpieces, while others will claim the same piece to be garbage. Okay, so this is what comes to mind for me. Okay. Uh, Technophys, good answer. Technophys says, because art is time taking. It is a field of study. Sure. In some ways, it's a science, right? Ironic to say that. Okay. So you go through these questions, you go through the how. How does abstract art work? How does it exist? For Dobbs says, nowadays many people spend a lot of money to buy abstract art. For Dobbs, very true. Okay. Nyan T. Kim Nguyen says, sir, can I get band 6.5 by watching this? Nyan T. Kim, I can sure help you get a band 6.5 by watching this, but it takes a lot of practice, exercise, to get 6.5, okay? Uh, Valiant uh, Venture says, art is an unusual way that you can demonstrate your thoughts. Yeah, or another way, uh, Valiant Venture to say it, is uh, an artist uses some tools like oil paint to create an art piece from their thoughts. Yeah. Okay, like that blue rectangle. Sure. Okay. All right. So we're asking these what, why, how questions. We get a lot of different answers. And then at some point we say, okay, 
I can predict this, and now I'm going to read. So far, we took three steps. So we read the title, we looked at the picture, okay? So here it was, The Aesthetic Merit of Abstract Art. I read the title, what is this? It's something about art, some strange kind of art. It's this art I see in the picture, which is difficult to understand it's difficult to be clear. I think I know the meaning of merit. It means value, so it's the value of this kind of art. Good. Then I go to my second step. I look at the questions, read the ones that have information which is in the passage and get a better idea of the passage. I did that with these matching information to paragraphs multiple choice uh, questions and then I did step three uh, which is thinking critically okay what am I doing here I'm reading a passage about this kind of art what is this art what is this abstract art it's art that I cannot touch or see why is it important to talk about its beauty uh, because people like to argue about art. They like to pay lots of money for art. How does it work? Well, some artist takes a bucket of paint, throws the paint at the canvas or a wall, and says that that is a deer that just got hit by a car, and it's a tragic event, and everybody should cry when they see it. All right, so that's abstract art. So I get all of these ideas in my head very quickly in about three minutes okay two three minutes all right now I'm ready to read this is your goal students and this takes time okay uh, Kala Smaller Masar says this strategy does not work for lower level students um, you're right comma uh, lower level students need to focus more on their language studies like grammar vocabulary and just doing a lot of reading. You cannot get a band 7, 7.5 if you're a band 5 student um, and uh, you don't have enough vocabulary. That's just the reality of it. I'm not going to lie to you and say that it's possible. There are no magical tricks. Everybody needs to understand that. But using the right strategies can help you to get high band scores consistently effectively without stressing okay here we go so uh, let's get ready to read all right read with me and then we will answer the questions afterwards together all right here we go so a abstract art is notorious for its apparent lack of artistic skill meaning and value while its harshest critics believe that abstract art is not art at all, many art connoisseurs feel that abstract art is an aesthetically pleasing expression of the human condition. This article will discuss both sides of the issue and present arguments for and against the aesthetic merit of abstract art. What is this paragraph about? It's about whether or not aesthetic art has or doesn't have value. Now students, this is a reading class, so make sure to read with me. Okay, read aloud with me. So read aloud with me, all right? Okay, here we go with the next paragraph. Abstract art, by definition, does not follow the rules of reality. Until the late 19th century, artists had more or less stuck to the notion of art as representation of reality. Artists such as Gainsborough or Rembrandt followed the rules of reality with regards to light, perspective, physics, 
and logic. Abstract artists like Jackson Pollock rejected these supposed rules of painting. Instead, Pollock made his own rules or rejected rules entirely. The aesthetic value of works such as Pollock's, that is to say the ability for works like his to elicit pleasure when viewed, is the point at stake in this discussion. What is this paragraph about? This paragraph is about classical art from artists like Gainsborough or Rembrandt versus abstract art, more modern art by artists like Jackson Pollock and asking, is there value? Is there emotion in these modern pieces? Amarjeet Singh beautifully put in one word. Amarjeet says, this paragraph is about the rules of art. Absolutely. Amarjeet, very good. Rules. I love how you pulled that one word. That's brilliant. Okay. And Haiti Tepec says it's about breaking the rules of art. Very good, Haiti. Okay. All right. Those are clever, clever answers. And I can tell that many of you are practicing this now at home where you're thinking about what is the paragraph about. So you're using your critical analytic reading, and that's the right strategy to get high band scores. And this reading speed, students, so the speed that I'm reading at, it's enough to get a good score on the exam, okay? So you can get a good score with this reading speed. See, on one hand, some critics feel that abstract art is facile, silly, and indulgent. It is on their account a perfect example of the kind of art snobbery that the outside world finds so distasteful. Looking at a canvas covered in blue paint, we are meant to see something, perhaps jealousy, perhaps the depth of human emotion, perhaps the bleakness of the human condition. But for many people, they merely see a blue rectangle. It is not mere lack of imagination, however, that gives viewers the impression that the artwork lacks aesthetic merit. Many critics who have a keen eye for good art feel that many works of abstract art lack aesthetic merit. A common argument against these artworks is that they lack skill. Artworks by Rembrandt and Gainsborough are unambiguously works of profound skill. These artists committed their lifetimes to their craft, and it shows in the virtuosity of their works. What is this paragraph about? Well, this paragraph is about the argument against the value of aesthetic art. It says that aesthetic art doesn't need skill. It doesn't need a person to master what they're doing. It's just snobbery. It's just people imagining uh, value behind art that's not really there. So Jubril Ogunsanya says it's criticism. It's criticizing abstract art. Okay. Ferdov says it's the lack of uh, aesthetic art as true art. And you're right, Ferdovs. That's exactly it. Okay. All right. Paragraph D. Again, remember, read with me. It is important to note, however, that aesthetic merit must not be solely reserved for the sublime. In comparing Rembrandt to an abstract artist such as Pollock, one must realize there are many kinds of aesthetic merit. For example, there's the aesthetic merit in a sunset, in a beautiful sculpture, in a symphony, or even in a well-composed meal. So if aesthetic merit is represented in many-fold ways, it is possible that abstract art satisfies at least one of those criteria. Many critics say yes. Sorry, I should have said, is it possible? Many critics say yes. So what is this paragraph about? 
Tobitu says the advantages. Not really the advantages, Tobitu. I wouldn't say it that way. Um, this one is definitely not about the demerits of abstract art, MD Tosif. It is about the possible beauty of abstract art. It is about aesthetic merit, Juan Pablo. Absolutely right. So aesthetic merit is not just in a nice painting, but it can be in a sunset. It could be a well-made uh, spaghetti. Okay. So it could even be a well-composed meal. Visualize that. Visualize a beautifully made uh, ice cream, for example. It could be beautiful, right? Good. All right. Paragraph E. Let's keep going. The value of abstract art lies, for some critics, in its mystery. Whereas realist artworks simply show and tell their meaning, the meaning of abstract art works is hidden behind a veil of ambiguity. Perhaps the artist has an intended meaning. Perhaps the artist does not. Additionally, the meaning for one person may be different than the meaning for another person. The key is that the painting does have meaning. But is meaning the same as aesthetic merit? Arguably not. Words have meanings, for example, but lack aesthetic merit. However, one might say for a painting or other artwork to have meaning is precisely for it to have aesthetic merit. What is this paragraph about? It is about the mystery of abstract art, the different views of abstract art making it mysterious. But is that really beauty? Okay. Yeah, so Valiant Venture says it's about the mystery of abstract art, or Cool Guy says it's about the purpose of abstract art. Sure, which may or may not be its beauty. A couple short paragraphs left. Let's do it. You're doing a great job, by the way, students. So notice that as we read these and as you identify what the paragraph is about, you're doing a great job to understand it. So this is why you never want to panic or freak out when you see a more difficult topic. Okay, let's keep going. Perhaps the real answer to the debate is that whether an object has aesthetic merit or not is up to the viewer. An object can have aesthetic merit for one person, but lack it for another person. So in this sense, abstract art is neither meritorious nor the opposite. Instead, it is whatever the viewer thinks it is. On this account, if a person finds an abstract work of art aesthetically pleasing, then that artwork is aesthetically pleasing for him or her. If not, then it is not. What's this paragraph about? What do you think? Keep it simple. Yeah, Carolina says it's point of view of the viewer. <laughs> right, Carolina. So it's the beauty is up to the perspective of the viewer. Beauty is up to the perspective of the viewer. That's what it's about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and I can see several students coming up with the same idea. All right. Uh, G, this answer, however, will not satisfy some readers who desire a clear answer to the debate in question. For such readers, it is important to point out that ambiguity is inherent in all art. In fact, ambiguity is part of the aesthetic experience itself. So the fact that there is no clear answer forthcoming to the aesthetic merit of abstract art is not surprising. It is the nature of art to lack crystal clarity in order to invite the interpretation and meditation which are critical parts of the very aesthetic experience in question. What is this paragraph about? 
this paragraph is about the ambigu ambiguity in art. So the excitement of having ambiguity in art. Uh, Kartik, Joshi, very good. So Kartik says, ambiguity is inherent. Uh, no art piece is perfectly crystal clear. Yeah, Amarjit, very good. Uh, ambiguity, Nyan Tin Kim, you're right. It's the nature of art, the fundamental nature of art. Okay, let's uh, see how well we do with our questions now. So now that we've read the passage, we use some active reading skills, critically analyzing paragraphs. We can go through the questions. So you may use any letter more than once. 27, the rejection of old art rules. Um, when did we read about that? So now we certainly answer the questions, Valiant Venture. So when did we read about the rejection of old art rules? Jubril says it was probably paragraph B. Okay. MD Tosif agrees. A lot of you do. I can't remember if it was paragraph A, B, or C, but I remember it was in the beginning. And I remember reading about different artists, some classical and some new ones that were like, rules, what rules? Throw that out the window, right? So I remember that was in the beginning with that those interesting names, the Pollock guy, right? That Pollock guy, can I find that Pollock guy? Jackson Pollock rejected these rules of painting. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I confidently, I'm not searching or scanning the whole passage. I'm not wasting minutes trying to look for these words or matching words. Virtually impossible at this point in this passage to skim or scan for answers. So you have to know what you're doing, okay? So here we go, B. 28, different kinds of aesthetic value. That's right, Valiant Venture. That's, my, that's, the, that's one of the most important points that I want to give all students. Valiant Venture says, so cool, reading is not as frightening as it seems. It isn't Valiant Venture if you go through logical steps, okay? So a lot of you for this one say, I think that's D or E. Uh, what were those different aesthetic values? We visualized, right? We saw what we were reading. So what were those different aesthetic values? What were they? Before we search for that paragraph, what were they? What were those different aesthetic values or different kinds of aesthetic value? So it's when the author said, well, there, there's value in a, uh, there's a value in this, there's a value in that. What were the, ah, there we go. Jibril says like the sunlight. Um, Jibril, it wasn't the sunlight, although that's good enough for you to figure it out. It's a sunset okay, when the sun is going down. It's not, yeah. So Shailu uh, Chaliseri says sunset, food, etc. Exactly. And that was somewhere near the middle end, right? So, um, yeah, look at D says there's many kinds of aesthetic merit. For example, sunset, sculpture, symphony, even the food. So it's got to be D. D it is. Uh, 29, two competing arguments about the value of abstract art. So two competing arguments about the value of abstract art. Okay, so that's the debate. That's where one side says this, the other side says that, right? So where did I read about that? Where did I read about people competing on this abstract value of art? Is that near the beginning or the end? Kind of makes sense for that to be 
somewhere maybe near the beginning, right? I mean, what are we talking about here? The passage is mostly about that, right? So I would think that it's somewhere near the beginning. In fact, I would think that's worthy information for the introduction. So while its harshest critics believe that abstract art is not art at all, many art connoisseurs feel that abstract art is aesthetically pleasing expression of the human condition. So clearly, it's got to be A. Think about it. That information should be the introduction, right? So it should be in the introduction. It makes sense for this answer to be somewhere in the introduction. 30, ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. 30, ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. Okay, so MD Tosef says, I think 30 is going to be G. Mario says maybe E. So G or E. What's important, students, is that you know roughly the location so you can find it very quickly because you know that that was supporting abstract art. Okay. All right. The value of abstract art for some critics, uh, it is in its mystery. Where realist artworks simply show and tell their meaning, the meaning of abstract artwork is hidden behind a veil of ambiguity. All right, that looks pretty good. Some people said that it's G. This answer, however, will not satisfy some readers who desire clear answer. For such readers, it is important to point out that ambiguity is inherent in all art. In fact, ambiguity is part of the aesthetic appeal or experience itself. Okay, G definitely looks to be a better match for number 30. Ambiguity itself provides part of the aesthetic experience. A pretty close match in words there as well. So G is pretty good. Uh, Thobitu says, why are the words exactly mentioned, but in the real test, they're not? Um, sometimes they're close, Thobitu, but some other questions, they're really paraphrased a lot, okay? Here, you get lucky a little bit, but you can't base your answers on luck. You have to do it the way that I'm showing you, all right? Okay, uh, number 31, the mysterious nature of abstract art. We just looked at that because we assumed that could be the paragraph for the last one. So that's going to be E, right? And Amina got that right away. Very good, Amina Saeed. That's perfect. Johan Justy, very good. Jabril, great. Amarjeet, excellent. Uh, number 32, aesthetic value is up to the viewer. Aesthetic value is up to the viewer. That one seems to be pretty close to the end as well. Okay. Yeah, and I see uh, Amina saying, I think that's probably like the last one because it sounds like a conclusion. And I agree that it's going to be somewhere there. Perhaps the real answer to the debate is that whether an object has aesthetic merit or not is up to the viewer. So very good for those of you who are thinking near the end. So that one is F. Absolutely. Very good. Okay. All right. So those are the answers to the matching the endings. And notice that it's not as terrible as it seemed at the beginning. So a lot of students, they panic. And panic is the worst. Panic is the enemy. Okay, I'll get you back on screen here.
So panicking is the enemy. Never panic when you see a difficult topic. Just remember that there are step-by-step -step strategies and you need to follow those strategies to give yourself the best chance for getting the correct answers. Thank you, Kartik. It's my daughter. All right. So let's look at a couple of these true fall or sorry, a couple of these uh, multiple choice questions. All right. Yeah, Amina, that's right. Of course, it sounds really tricky at the beginning, but once you practice these, that's the idea, then it will be easier, okay? Okay, here we go. So with uh, multiple choice, the trick is to think about the answer on your own first and then match the closest choice, okay? So what makes abstract art different from classical art. So in your own words, what makes abstract art different from classical art? Well, classical art follows rules of reality, physical, visual, lighting, right? And abstract art doesn't. Abstract art seems to break the rules. So let me see if there's a... Um, a choice that matches with this classical follows rules, abstract doesn't really follow rules, okay? So A, it is made after the 19th century. No, it does not follow classical art rules. Um, okay, it follows a pattern of logic. It elicits pleasures from the viewer. Um, yeah, I think B is the closest. It does not follow classical art rules. I'm just going to choose B. So good job to those of you who chose B. Okay, uh, number 34. A common critique of abstract art is that it lacks something. So it doesn't have something. If I remember correctly, a lot of uh, that passage was saying that it lacks skill. It doesn't, you don't need to be good at art to create classical art. You can just take paint, throw it at the wall, call it a beautiful piece, sell it for a few million dollars and you're good to go. But classical art really needs somebody to be skillful with their hands, their eyes, their coordination. So let's see. Imagination. Nope, nope. Throwing paint at the wall might take imagination. Uh, classical laws of physics? I don't think so. Bleakness of human condition? Yeah, scale looks pretty good. So I'm going to choose that one, D. So Mario, good job. You had that figured out pretty early on. Again, students, uh, the key here is think about the answer on your own first and then choose. Otherwise, it can be very tricky. Okay? It's easy to make a mistake if you're depending on the choices for your answer. All right? Okay, students, so why is it important to note that aesthetic merit not be solely reserved for the sublime? So why is it important to think about that, that aesthetic merit not just be for something that's really beautiful? Why? Well, what I remember, again, visualizing about the sunset, the spaghetti, is because aesthetic merit is found in many different forms and shapes, right? So you don't need to go to the text for this. You already had a question that helped you with this, right? If you got this question correct, different kinds of aesthetic value, and you read the passage carefully, then you should remember that Aesthetic merit, so when we say something is beautiful, we say it's beautiful for many different kinds of things. We say it for people, clothing, food, buildings. There are many types of parts of aesthetic art. So there's more than one kind of aesthetic merit, 
That looks pretty good. Aesthetic merit is reserved for experts. There is aesthetic merit in a sunset. Abstract art may have additional meanings. The best answer is there's more than one kind of aesthetic merit, A. Right? Why is it not C? Why is it not the sunset? It's not C. C, M, D, 2, C, Ali, it's too specific. It's just one example of aesthetic merit. The answer to the question is there's more than one kind of aesthetic merit. A is the best answer. Okay, That's right, Juan Pablo. Very good. It's partial. So uh, C is just a partial answer. It's not completely wrong, but it's a partial answer. Yeah, it's just one form. Exactly. Okay, students, I'll leave the last few questions to you for homework. While realist works of art explicit or show their meaning, abstract works of art do what? So that's the last multiple choice. That's for you. Here are the four true, false, not given questions. You can come back to this in the video later. I've completely run out of time, but I wanted to get to this point with you in today's lesson, so I'm happy that you stuck it out with me. Uh, tomorrow, we will focus on the task one, task two writing of the IELTS exam. Until then, download our app, Academic IELTS Help, and check out our website, aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com for lots more videos and help with pre 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 preparation. <laughs> for the test. Um, again, those websites, they look like this. I'm actually in the website here. Um, they look like this is the academic with the blue background. And for the general uh, version of the website, uh, go to this one here with the green background. Click the big red buttons to join. You're very welcome, Amarjeet. You're welcome, Jubril. Have an awesome rest of your day. Hopefully, I'll see most of you again tomorrow. You have beautiful minds. Keep up the hard work. You will reach your goals. Bye for now.